research and education foundation named for dmb students and uh, uh, pg students uh, brought to you through auto tv and today again we have uh, professor taneja from indore who's going to talk to us about uh, uh, various aspects of scrubbing draping gowning etc which again uh, is important for infection uh, prevention so over to you professor taneja uh Thank you, John, so much. And this is uh, in our series uh, of lecture, which has been devoted basically to the operation theater techniques, uh, which uh, is the our experience that our students think they are very basic things and they have no proper reading on their subjects, and they are sometimes unable to answer a very basic question, and which does not put in a good impression on the examiner. so the all of india thought that we should have these basic lectures we had a lecture on sterilization then we had a lecture on sutures and needle and then i was uh, asked by john that if we can talk a little bit on scrubbing gowning and plowing so this is what our a brief talk is going to be there so my agenda will be that i'll be a little bit share with my students the history of uh, how these things started all over the world then how we tell you how proper scrubbing is done how the gowning is done how the gloving is done and then what is our conclusion now history is very really interesting you see if you go into the literature you find that uh, almost uh, mid 19th century before there was no much mention about the hand wash and about the disinfection about the microbiology and about the bacteria though they are mention of about the pus in a different way and uh, oliver holmes from the boston university in 1843 did talk about that the hand washing is important as you know that uh, the whole story started that the patient who were undergoing a normal delivery the many of uh, ladies would be getting a infection after the delivery and they didn't know what was the cause of this infection and uh, meeting each other and uh, they then they the, the surgeon decided that if he washes his hand and then he goes for the delivery the infection rate was coming down and that is how the idea came that they are probably uh, passing on these germs to the area of operation and this what the infection is going on in 1860 spencer well he emphasized that we need to have a fresh towels clean towels we should have wash our hands properly and we don't want any spectators in the ot you remember that even in the my days when i was in a medical student in agra we had the operation theater within a something this type and we used to sit down in the operation theater and which was covered by the glass and see from the top the operation we performed because there was no other way to see the operation so he said that this is the great source of infection and this is what this thing in 1861 again the samuel weiss from vienna he again emphasized on the hand washing that the hand washing is extremely important for prevention of any type of infection by doing a surgery of course we all know that the father of the antiseptic uh, surgery antiseptic era joseph lister in 1865 who talked about and demonstrated effectively the effect of disinfection on the reduction of surgical site infection and he emphasized the use of we all know that carbolic acid and by diluting the carbolic acid and they will uh, wash their hands without putting any gloves and will do the surgery and will at the operation area they will also do the carbolic spray and now that will according to joseph lister they found the incidence of infection rate or at that time it was called as just infection 
that surgical site infection was much lower. In 1895, the, it was standardized that the, before you go for surgery, you have to take these three steps. One, that you wash your hands with the soap and hot water for five minutes. You apply 90% alcohol with a brush for three to five minutes, clean your this thing, and again rinse your hand with an antiseptic liquid and go for your surgery. So these three steps were by 1895, that is the end of the 19th century, this thing was getting established. And then the uh, Friedrich Preven uh, was a gentleman because this, uh, both in France and Germany, uh, they were becoming uh, almost uh, uh, very uh, particular about the cleaning of the patient, uh, surgeon wearing a special type of shoe and putting on the gown. This thing is started in Germany and France. And But still many people, surgeons, they had a laugh on this thing that what is the need to put on a special shoe? What is the need to put on a gown? And they say, at that time, by that time, by 1896, the carbolic acid was given up because it was causing a lot of uh, problem and less and less surgeons were using the carbolic acid. In 1910, this is a very interesting story that uh, William Halstead, who was a surgeon in uh, America, uh, his wife was a OT nurse. And uh, one day the, his wife said that, uh, I'm not going to scrub and I'm not going to assist you because using carbolic acid, I've got a severe dermatitis of my hand. So there's a big problem. And William Halstead had a very good friend in a good year um, tire company and uh, he talked to him and he said, can you do something for my wife? She doesn't want to scrub. He said, okay, I'll try to prepare some type of rubber gloves for your wife. And that is how the, the rubber gloves were developed for the first time. And William Halstead's wife who was an OT nurse, started using it. And since then, the gloves became a part and parcel of our OT attire. In 1939, there was a little bit of controversy whether the, we should be washing hands for seven minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes. And the price was the surgeon who said, this seven minutes, good hand wash, using any soap or anything, and then using the alcohol for three minutes. So he also emphasized that 10 minutes of washing this thing. And as we were uh, coming up as a students from the, we were also told that maybe minimum eight to 10 minutes, you must do a proper scrubbing before you go for surgery. But by the 1900 and say around 55 or around 1960, the everybody started realizing that uh, when they did some uh, controlled studies of the bacterial count, uh, after 10 minutes of scrub and after five minutes of scrub, they did not find much of the difference. And therefore they started saying the scrubbing time should be not more than five minutes. This is what is now the standard all over the world that we are now scrubbing for about five minutes time. Now, uh, when you are planning to go for scrubbing, the most important thing is that you have to prepare that I'm going for scrubbing today. I have to do my hand wash and then I have to do the gowning and the gloving. So the scrubbing is that uh, you know that today is your uh, OT day. So the, the whole thing starts from your home. You must have a proper shower at home, clean your body, whole body, properly shave yourself, yeah, brush your teeth, and don't use any perfume, don't have any jewelry, don't have any um, ring or anything, this thing on your body. Just simply dress up and go to the OT. These are the few very basic things because uh, I remember when uh, I was being trained in uh, London, we had one OT nurse who was very fond of using perfume. And one day my boss had to tell her that, look, Jenny, I know you are very fond of using perfume. Sorry, I will not allow you to enter my operation theater. So they uh, very politely, the British ways of uh, denying the person or saying no to them. And these are some very basic things. Uh, still, you will find that many of the other nurses come to the operation theater. 
putting on long hair and having the nails grown up and putting on the jewelry and this is a very objectionable thing and we the surgeons have a very important role to play in this thing and especially the our ot supervisor should be a very strict disciplinarian in this matter we know that the hands are the very important part of our body they are the tools which care for you they are the hands which you feel it helps you to diagnose it helps you to give cure it helps you to fall and provoke and hands are very important portal in transmitter of infection to an orthopedic surgeon this last line is the key line that our hands are the most important portal and the transmitter of infection we all know that uh, the all the body and our epidermis we all the time are harvesting streptococcus epidermidis on our skin and our hands which are all the time in constant use with the so many external items and that we have uh, millions of bacteria on our hands and therefore the hand wash is uh, so very important now we know that uh, any infection that take place surgical site infection you know that this word was coined in 1992 is they greatly contribute to the nodal comal infection so that is a, therefore the surgical site infection prevention is the key point and a good surgical hand washing definitely helps in prevention of infection so the hand washing is extremely important in the prevention of infection which is the first and fundamental uh, duty of any orthopedic surgeon to make sure that his person patient does not get any infection so uh, why we do the scrubbing you know it's very simple thing it removes any type of debris and transient microorganism which are on your hand it reduces the any resident microbial count whatever the count it get much reduced it doesn't get uh, zero remember this thing you still are left with some count but it is never zero and it inhibits the rebound growth of bacteria so you see the, these bacteria try to multiply and they regrow bacteria but if you have done a good scrubbing at least far it has been found that for one to two hours there is no any further growth of the bacteria after that there is a new bacteria and again there is a growth and multiplication of the bacteria therefore is scrubbing is a very important part and the first step in our surgery so remove your all jewelry and wash the hands and the arms with an any antimicrobial soap and clean your some angle area which are usually left with a nail file and you start your timing must have an habit wherever you are scrubbing make sure that you have a um, so clock there in front of you and then you can go to scrub and keeping all the time your hands higher than the arm so this is so the technique that you you have to scrub for 5 minutes 3 minutes is the scrub area and 2 minutes is a thorough wash rinsing your hand in the water so uh, we will show you uh, sorry Just a minute. I will call my son. maybe you can carry on and then come back and okay. we'll it later right so uh, the, uh, the the scrub that we use 
there are many types of scrubs which are available these days. Now, what are the correct Devesh and Nichiana which you look at? Jaldi se. Ah, Devesh. So, what we should know about is the what is the antimicrobial action of that uh, the scrub that you are going to use. The how long its action will be there. And whether it is safe and will not cause any type of uh, dermatitis or any type of allergic reaction, whether it is acceptable to the everybody, and that it is a cost effective. Okay. So these these That's are the some, these are the some of the uh, requirements which are which makes it a good. Uh, okay. So. The most common uh, uh, scrub that we are using these days, we all, you know, it is an hexadine scrub or a betadine scrub. It is just the matter of choice. The niche adopted will be problem on the So the uh, um, uh, both are very effective, both betadine scrub and hexadine scrub. Although some people claim. That with the hexadine scrub, you the count at the hand is much much better uh, in reduction of the count of the uh, organism. And these days we have also got the impregnated scrub brushes, which you can uh, use it and you can clean your this thing. But many of the people are not using these days uh, the brush, and they just want to clean this thing. And uh, I'll. Uh, my son has come back, probably he will help me to uh, make that uh, video start. How oh, this video is not starting. But this is not working. I'm going to click on it. I'm really very sorry. I do not know it was working uh, uh, because that's a very important. Uh, it, it, it really demonstrates. Now, just uh, carefully, uh, all my students who are watching this thing, and those who are watching this thing, they should very carefully see that. Uh, Look at the dress of the uh, our uh, OT nurse. Uh, the most important thing is this, that he has uh, tucked in his shirt into the pajama. Now, the, I have seen most of the time the surgeons are putting their uh, uh, shirt outside this thing, which is not recommended. And uh, preferably, I always recommend the people to wear short gum boots when you are in the OT. Because all the time, the Staphylococcus epidermidis, which are shedding from your skin, are then will not come into the floor and will go and fall into your gum boot, and your environmental count of bacteria will not go high. Now here you can see that uh, Mr. Ram Brose is a, our OT supervisor who is conducting the OT technician courses, that he has taken the betadine scrub and uh, these uh, in our hospital, they have got the sensors by which you don't have to touch the handle of the uh, water tap. And just by sensor, you will get the water. You have to go, your sleeve should be well, much high. And then you should go and scrub above the elbow. That's very important. The most, uh, very often I've seen the youngsters, are, if a surgeon is in great hurry, he will uh, not uh, include the elbow and will just quickly come down. And you can see that he's scrubbing it very thoroughly after he has done the scrubbing of the elbow joint. Now he is doing palm to palm. This is what he is doing. It. This is interdigitalization. Going in between the fingers is very important, which is uh, sometimes um, uh, avoided. And now you can see that his, uh, his nails is trying to rub against each other and now he's taking the thumb and doing the rotatory movements and also on the palm of the thumb 
these rotatory movements. Now, these are very small things, and uh, probably we think that uh, what is there to learn here, but uh, as uh, uh, my teacher always used to say, that uh, we, the uh, people in the medicine, should always be willing to learn even the smallest thing that you learn from the, even from your uh, OT technicians and OT supervisor. Um, our OT supervisor, and in all the hospital, I find that the OT supervisor and your OT nurse are usually very knowledgeable. And one should, I'm asking my all PG students that you should never feel any hesitant or below dignity to going to them and asking them to teach you that how we have to do proper scrubbing and this thing. The other important thing that you must see that, that you see the, your tap should be uh, not too high and not too low. Because if it's too low, you have to bend yourself and go into this uh, uh, sink. And as a result of this thing, the, anything which is at the elbow will uh, come down to your hand, which you do not want it. At the same time, it should not be too high. With that, there will be splashing of the whole water onto your uh, clothes which you have bought. So this is uh, the way you have to scrub it. And usual time is about uh, five minutes. So if you have got a clock there, you can do that. Okay. So this is the, how you should do a good scrubbing. And we have talked to you about the characteristics of the club. And we have told you that uh, it is the chlorhexidine and betadine, which they say. And uh, these days we have a special type of gel which is now uh, available. Uh, uh, I've seen a uh, uh, Pele, he took out one uh, a tube from his pocket in the operation theater and just put something on the, uh, his hands and rubbed and made some, uh, rubbed it. And then with that he uh, put on the gloves. So probably he was saying that they are very effective in uh, uh, reducing the uh, bacterial count on your hand and uh, produce a lot of good disinfection and he was very happy with that. Now, the, so the big the scrubbing disadvantage is that the too frequent scrubbing sometimes leads to the dermatitis and especially if your quality of the scrub is not good, it causes dryness of the skin and uh, sometimes, you know, it is good to have a liquid paraffin and mix it with a little bit of alcohol, make a solution out of that and keep rubbing it on your uh, hand and on your forearm or you have a, some type of a cream in your operation theater that off and on you should keep applying uh, that thing, this thing. The other thing is this thing that using the uh, too much uh, use of the brush is also not very good because it opens up the uh, pores of your skin and a lot of your organism which has been lying dormant there, they come out of this thing and that is not very much treatment. So a good two to three times washing your hands and forearm above the elbow two to three times with a good uh, scrub, is, this is what is required. Okay, now we go to the gowning. Now, uh, the you see these days a lot of, uh, you have the uh, ready-made gowns coming, you have the disposable gowns coming when we are doing a joint replacement surgery or even our own gowns which are coming. There's a method to how to pack this gown and how to wrap this gown. There's a special technique to do that. And the technique is this, that the, it is the outer uh, side uh, of the, uh, this thing, that, uh, which is so very important because the, you have to just, I'll show you, you have to grasp the gown and during the folding outside face is away. You see, that's important. And you hold the gown at a shoulder level and it will unfold by itself and you don't try to shake the gown. That is a one mistake, we do that. And, uh, and you then you place your hand inside the hole and raise your hand and spread the arm. Do not allow hands to come out of the gown. That is the way because we'll tell you how the gloving is done and your circulating nerves will tie the gown. Now uh, we will show you that how this uh, Mr. Ambrose has now scrubbed, has come, he has got a towel, he's going to, you can see this thing that on from 
on from one side of the towel he is cleaning the his forearm and he throws his towel there he takes the sterilium again and he puts it on his hand and on his both the forearm nicely rubs it and that is how in the interdigital area also and when it is with a dry then now see carefully what he is doing he is not just picked up the he is just not picked up the gown at the moment he has picked up his own number of gloves and he is just uh, see what he is going to do with that so first he is putting on the gloves so uh, the, uh, this technique will tell you what this technique is called as he has put on the gloves and with now these gloves he is going to touch the gown now this is called as almost a no touch technique of holding the gown and after he has held this gown now you see that he is opening the gown the one is the inside area another is the outside area it is the outside area that it should not come in contact with anything the circulating nurse is uh, tying the gown uh, at the back and uh, now you see what he is going to do that Uh, his gown has been tied, and this is, uh, and he has already put on one pair of gloves. Now he is going to put on the second pair of the gloves. Okay, this is called as the double gloving technique. Now these days most of the surgeons, because of the HIV and hepatitis and corona and so many problems. that the most of the surgeon i have seen in i use it now all the time double gloving myself and i'm sure all the other surgeon who are listening and the students who are listening must also be as a precaution they are using a, a double gloving although the the tiny puncture of the uh, gloves do take place about which we take place and now he is ready and he is now trying to put down his trolley in order that uh, everything he will see there's got the gully pot is going to put it uh, everything so you know uh, we are uh, not uh, taking up when we do an operation theater our orthopedic uh, or if india is conducting ot technician courses very regularly and uh, we have written a book on the uh, ot te- technique they are one of the uh, one of the thing that we teach them is how to lay a trolley so basic trolley and then we have a basic instrument and then we have a special instrument there are three types of trolleys which are uh, used that and there is a method each uh, draping has to be put at which place so this is the way the gowning is done and this is you can see that the back is also well covered now these days you have a uh, um the uh, disposable gown which are coming in which uh, there is a so now we proceed on to the gloving okay so the there are two types of gloving one is called as the open gloving uh, and other is called as the closed gloving so uh, when say you have to do some very minor procedure you just want to come and put on the gloves and want to just go and uh, do a minor procedure you can just do a open gloving if you are doing some major surgery it's good to go for close gloving so uh, you know you can see that he has put on the and the hands are out the hands are in open so therefore this is called as the open glove now the most important part of the gloving is this that the part of the glove which will come in contact with the body should not be touched by the bare hand because the bare hand are carrying the organism so this is the way he has done it this is called as the open gloving this is a, the way you do it and uh, <clears throat> This is the uh, open glove. We now he will uh, demonstrate 
Mr. Ram Rose, you can see that this is a closed glove. You can see that, that his hands are well inside the gown. And uh, yeah, these hands are not touching the gloves. He has with the gown, he has picked up a, a glove and he has just put it on to this thing. Now with this hand, which has got a glove, he puts it on to the other arm also. Now, this is called as the closed gloving. In both the, in this case, the, the hands, the bare hands have not touched the gloves at all. And, uh, and you can now you're ready. You can want, you can make it a double gloving also. And this thing. Some very interesting studies has been done. And these studies have shown that uh, that in majority of the studies reveal that about 18% of the surgeon's gloves always have a tiny puncture after the surgery is over. And if your surgery has gone just over two hours, the percentage of the punctures in the gloves is about 35%. Now, you know that if there's a puncture in the glove, then the organism on your hand can pass through that puncture and can go into the uh, operation, operation field and cause a contamination of the wound. So this is, a, therefore, the puncture of the wound is taken to be taken very seriously. But that we do not know when our gloves get punctured. So the people started using the double gloves. And when they did some the control studies, they found that even in the double glove, the 4% of the gloves of the surgeons get punctured. So whatever you may do, the gloves do get punctured, which you do not see. The good part is that these days we are all using disposable gloves. There was a time when we were training ourselves, even in the 1970s and 80s, they, those gloves were again and again were being sterilized and were given to us. So what is my conclusion? That my conclusion is that the infection, which is a dreadful complication for orthopedic surgeon, has been present since the beginning of a civilization. Organisms has been isolated, antibiotics have come into this thing with much euphoria, then despair due to resistance, new strains are being identified, and so are the newer antibiotics and a very costly antibiotics. What is important is that we take all measures to prevent the infection. And if at all there is infection, then it should be handled at a war footing. However secure and well-regulated a civilized life may become, bacteria, viruses, protozoa, etc., will always lurk in the shadow, ready to pounce when neglect, poverty, famine, etc., lets down the, our defense mechanism. So whatever we can best do is we should do that. Therefore, I always say that an effective surgical scrub is the most powerful in infection prevention that is a surgical site infection. Very important. So scrubbing is very, very important. Two, the, we are using gloves because as we have told you about the gloves, the puncturing of the gloves, if they give us a false sense of security, but they are important because you are dealing with a lot of patients of HIV, hepatitis, and you are dealing with the patient with corona, always use a double glove these days. This is my strong recommendation. Aseptic gowning and gloving are again important for the prevention of infection. The, we have not covered here draping, but you, uh, we can, uh, that part is a different thing. The primary draping and secondary draping and tertiary draping, which is also an important part that everybody should know. And I, with this, I end my talk here with my lots of thanks to the chairman, Dr. John Mukhopadhyay of RF India. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Thank you, Professor Taneja. And uh, so uh, that was uh, excellent. Uh, exposition of the various aspects of uh, washing and uh, gowning and I think now we should leave it to the youngsters to ask questions. So, so the, please ask your questions and uh, 
हेलो सर गुड इवनिंग सर सर वन क्यूरी अबाउट द पार्ट प्रिपरेशन लाइक हेयर रिमूवल सर एंड व्हेन शुड इट बी डन एंड बाय व्हाट मेथड सर द वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन यू सी द प्रीवियसली आई मे टेल यू द प्रीवियसली इट वाज टॉट टू अस दैट यू शुड डू अ शेविंग ऑफ द पार्ट शुड बी डन it should be done a night before the surgery whole if you have an operation to be done on the thigh then whole of the thigh should be shaved even in part of the abdomen and part of the leg but now there are lots of studies which have shown that this is not required at all actually now they are saying that you should do the preparation of the part just in the outside your operation theater half an hour before this thing and the best thing is either by doing a clipping and that is small area where you are going to put in an incision and sometimes they say you should use in a hair removing cream that is far much better but never use the blade uh, if at all you are using a blade use a fresh blade and very careful make sure that you don't make any cut into that okay that's a very very important thing and i'm happy you have this question thank you sir sir uh, yes sorry i think what uh, the reason for that is that if you do shave them before there is colonization of the skin back from bacteria yeah. uh, whatever little scratches etc they may be and you end up actually increasing the risk of infection so now the uh, sort of uh, practice or the recommendation is to do it just before surgery okay so yeah, yes, and sir. It, Sir, uh, one more curious. If, sir, if some... there is not much hair, then you actually don't even need to shave. So okay, sir. Just line pediatric patients. Exactly. So you don't need. You don't have to shave it. Just to, it's, if there if there is long hair, then it gets in the way. It creates problems. So then you don't. You better to. Okay. Sir. Okay, sir. Ah, uh, sir. Uh, one more question, sir. Some center or some surgeon uh, prefer overnight uh, scrubbing, uh, especially in the cases of the orthoplasty, sir. TKR or KHR. So, any any advantage of overnight scrubbing? Ah, uh, of the patient, of the patient. Yes, you are absolutely right. That patients who are undergoing a very major surgery, like a joint replacement, where you are going to use a cement. we always recommend that that part should be clean with an chlorhexidine or better than a scrub just clean it yes. scrub it that's all don't use any brush clean it and after cleaning it if you have got an sterile towel or something wrap that area into this thing you are uh, from the skin you have been able to remove lot many uh, organism from that skin and the the skin count of the bacteria will be much less and of course then in the operation theater you nicely scrub that area that's a good idea and i i i do it myself because i don't want my patient to get infection yeah okay so yes, that's that's important and so even they recommend a shower before the patient actually uh, few hours Some before story. the patient actually coming to the surgery okay so thank you sir yeah any other question No, all covered, sir. Okay. I will say all sir. They say why mm-hmm. sir is talking yes, sir. so basic thing. <laughs> sir is talking so basic thing. Everybody knows, it. but there's very small few things that mm-hmm. everybody learns uh, in due course of time, and one yes, should sir. follow that. And uh, you know, my teacher in orthopedics always believed that the most important thing for reducing a surgical site infection. is not antibiotic it is the ot discipline okay yes, the ot discipline yes. includes everything your movement your talking part preparation your tissue handling that is space use of cautery um, sterility of your theater and uh, he would cite an example of his teacher that in a pre antibiotic area also the infection rate in there and was about 2 to 3% those who have maintained a very strict routine now we have it is almost full circle we have now almost come down to that thing now there are many surgeons who are not using antibiotic at all for uh, neither prophylactic antibiotic 
Now they are using it. Of course, with the antibiotic. Of course, majority of them are now using prophylactic antibiotic and just no antibiotic after one day. Okay, so all their use of the antibiotics are almost uh, is becoming less and less and less. And more people are now going on to the good strategy. Now, you see the operation theaters in India, the modular operation theater and the good microbiologist uh, available with you and the regular uh, culture of your uh, OT has really uh, helped a lot to this thing. And you know, good cautery, uh, negative section, all these has helped us to reduce the infection rate from a very high infection rate. I remember that uh, when we had a national conference in Jaipur about the, uh, the infections in the bone, and the people said, this at, at uh, one hospital in Ranchi, somebody said, this are, we have a 100% infection rate. Now it is nowhere in the country, nowhere. Even in the district hospital, people have made a very good improvement and the infection rate is much reduced. I'm sure that all uh, Ashok and uh, Neeraj and uh, John and Janki and myself, our infection rate is somewhere around 2%, or maybe less than 2%, which is a very good standard to be maintained. And sir, uh, what is the standard incidence of infection rate should be maintained in hospitals? Uh, it's a very good question, Bete. Uh, the you see that you must know what are the international standards. Unless until we know our international standards, we cannot talk about that what infection rate is accepted. Now, in, uh, international standards say that your infection rate should be below 1%. Okay? Yes, sir. John Charlie was trying to bring the infection rate to 0%. Eventually, he gave up and he said it is impossible to have a 0% infection rate. So then the world accepted that if you have a less than 1% infection rate, it is a highly acceptable and international step. Any infection rate of your operation theater between 1% to 2% is well accepted all over the world. Okay. Now, if your and infection rate, they say, goes beyond 3%, they say it is a very serious matter and it's a matter of concern and you must make an inquiry into this thing. That is the very important thing. And now how do you how do you monitor your infection rate? That's very important. Because in our hospital, uh, uh, we have an infection control committee, which all good hospitals have got. Any case which gets infected has to be reported to the infection control committee, and we analyze that where did we go wrong and why this patient got an infection. Okay. So please, yes, you sir. should do your own auditing. That what is infection rate in my hand? What is infection rate in my unit? What is infection rate in my department and what is my infection rate in the whole hospital, then you will be able to improve yourself, okay? Okay, sir. And sir, <laughs> this include acute and chronic infection both, sir? Pardon? And this is standard uh, uh, data, sir, include no, acute are, and chronic No, 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 not at all. We are talking of a surgical site infection. Surgical site infection means a post-op infection in a elected surgery in a non-compromised patient. So if you have got three okay. things, then usme kitna infection rate hum uske baat Okay, sir. Okay. So uh, there is a question asked by Dr. Sanjay Gurai. He want to know what is the rationale of use of betadine spirit and chlorhexidine for patient scrubbing before surgery and what should be the sequence? We have already told you, you see, they are antimicrobial. And when you are using the hexidine or you are using the, uh, uh, the betadine, you see what it is doing, it, it is trying to help and create that foam. And with that, you are rinsing it off your hand. And the lots of uh, the organisms which are uh, present in your hand are washed away. And the bacterial count on your hand is much reduced. It never becomes zero. Therefore, and they are antimicrobial. So, therefore, they help you in prevention of the uh, organism. And if the few of these uh, organisms even might die, we do not know about it. But your bacterial count is uh, much reduced. This is what the whole objective of the scrubbing is. And about I think it was yeah. the, uh, for the uh, uh, cleaning, painting of the patient. Yeah. Yeah. 
is actually somewhat similar now the sequence uh, usually would be to use either betadine or, or chlorhexidine uh, you don't use both usually and yeah. you can follow it up with spirit we, uh, you see what uh, we are doing in our hospital, that if the patient comes there, the one of the OT nurse will take a betadine scrub. Yeah, okay, first with scrub, that betadine scrub, scrub will clean the whole area very thoroughly, very thoroughly. He'll put on the gloves, but do it very thoroughly. And then you, once you have done the, then it comes to painting. Once the scrub has been, uh, the part has been scrubbed, then comes the painting. And the usual painting is done that they, uh, your, uh, yourself or this thing will take in a better day and will do the painting of that whole area. And sometimes we take a sterilium because it is all yellow color. In order to clean it, then you can use a sterilium and clean that whole, whole, whole area and you can dry it with a mop and you can do then draping and you can go ahead with that. No problem. And probably Sachin and has these, one question. These, these, these very small things of uh, painting, scrubbing, draping. Draping has to be is a very, very important. How you should be doing the draping, we can even talk on this for a very long time. And these all things help you to reduce your infection rate. People talk too much in the operation theater and they don't realize the patient is under a block or under a spinal patient is hearing everything from you. So you should maintain a very good uh, pin drop balance. You should maintain a very good humidity. We should be around 50%. You must have a temperature of about 20 to 21 degrees. All these things help you to reduce this. And um, uh, I conduct a course, and you saw I've been telling this thing that uh, there are five zones in the theater. I'm sure you all know that. Uh, white zone, yellow zone, blue zone, red zone and a black zone. Now, what is a black zone? The black zone is the one which is all around the your operation table, okay? So in that, once the, the trolley comes in, your uh, OT nurse will come in, your surgeon goes in, and then the assistant goes in, okay? Now, nobody can, this whole team can either go out of this black ring and nobody, separating nurse can come in the black ring. So this is the high level of this thing. Of course, you have a laminar airflow system working it and the circulating nurse, anything has to be remain outside this Lakshman Rekha and give this thing. Now, these small things, when you uh, follow, you find that uh, nobody believes that, sir, that you have infection rate, hardly 1% or 1% to 2%. How oh, it is possible? I say, you come and see that how my Mr. Ram say is so particular about this thing. He will touch and write down on the blackboard what is the temperature of the OT. I ask the people, surgeon, what is the humidity of your operation? They do not know. And in our operation theater, we have a humidometer and we have a thermometer. The first thing my assistant will do, put down the humidity and put down the temperature uh, this thing. And now these small things matter a lot in prevention of a surgical site infection. <clears throat> Yes, yes, Sachin. Yeah. Hello. Yes, Sachin. Ask. Uh, sir, um, as per sir uh, told us that the hand washing time should be five minutes. If we go more than one setting, the time will be remain the same, or it should be reduced. What? The the first time, if it's five minutes, yeah. uh, do you have to do five minutes each time, or the subsequent scrub you can do? No, 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 no. no. Total time scrubbing is about five minutes, okay? So three to four minutes good scrubbing with using a better DNA or core expedite. And one minute or one and a half minutes, you can put a good rinsing of within a water, this thing. I, I remember um, my friend Dilip Paul will remember that when I started doing the joint replacement in a government hospital where we were very afraid of the infection, uh, uh, infection this thing. So we even made an arrangement where we would, uh, for even washing your hands, we used to have a nice boiled water in one container and through which a tube it will come, it will get this thing. Almost a sterile water, we were trying to wash this thing. Because otherwise the water which comes from the uh, overhead tanks, 
sometimes very, very dirty. It contains a lot of contamination. So be very Sixteen. careful sometimes to get your overhead tanks also clean. That's very important. Yes. Excuse me, sir. It is for if we are doing for second OT, means after first OT is finished, second time if we are going for a scrubbing, is yeah. it five minutes for second OT also? Yeah, second. I think uh, this is a, you see, your, what are you trying to say? That I will do it for three minutes this time? No. No, no. You yes, see, yes. this is just saving of two minutes has no meaning in terms of preventing your infection. I would not do that. I, I, this is, I think this five minutes is nothing. I spend so much of time sitting in doctor's room having a cup of tea and I think I should save two minutes. It's just, no, it's not right thing. Whenever you never, you know, um, somebody used to ask me that what is a minor surgery, what is a major surgery, what is problem? I said, any surgery you do on any patient is a major surgery. And you should take surgery very, very seriously. I have seen patient getting into problem in a simple incision drainage going into a anaphylactic shock and they will get to a morsovical shock and big problems have happened. Never take any surgery very light. I never, even if I have to excise a ganglion, I'm very particular that it should be properly drained, it should be this thing and do your surgery. Surgery is an art. You should enjoy that. Never do anything in a great way. Okay? And uh, somebody very rightly said, doing a, some surgery and say he's a very fast surgeon. Then my, one of the teachers said, Look, the way fast surgery does not mean repeating the surgery. He will going to create some problem. So you should have a, a reasonable time for that surgery. That's all. That's what you require. You are not asking for an Olympic gold medal for that. Yeah, I think <laughs> soft tissue handling and soft, soft tissue handling is going into important. tissue, going into tissue play. I think we should. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, call it uh, mm -hmm. a day for today. Uh, yeah. So, thank you very much, Professor Taneja. And thank you, John. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, bye, everybody. Thanks.